well, there's quantum mechanics. You see, now quantum mechanics it consists of two parts. You see, this is basically I learned from Dirac about the puzzles of quantum mechanics. <laughs> I think it was partly because I dozed off at the beginning. It wasn't it clear my mind wandered at a certain point. This is his very first lecture. You <laughs> dozed off in Dirac's lecture? No, I didn't doze <laughs> off. I, I, my mind wandered. <laughs> no. no, you see, it was right at the beginning, and he was talking about the, the superposition principle. So you see, if you have a particle, and if there's one state of the particle is it's here, and another state of the particle is it's here, then you can have states where it's here and here at the same time. So you can see particles can be in two places at once. Crazy, but that's how quantum mechanics works. Then he took a, a piece of chalk, and I think he broke it in two, and said, look, the chalk is now, imagine it's here and here at the same time. That was the point my mind wanted, you see. Because he gave some explanation. I sort of had the faint, faintest idea what it was. I just remembered something about the word energy coming into it. And I've worried about that ever since, you see. So why is it that you don't have pieces of chalk in two places at once? Or people in two places at once and all that? And this is a big problem in quantum mechanics. So my view was that quantum mechanics can't be quite right. And Einstein had that view. Yes, he had a similar view, yes, yes. This is a little bit more specific because it has to do with why is it not right. But that took me longer to think about that. <laughs> but the view is that it can't be quite right. And the way in which it's not quite right has to be taken advantage of by the brain. So this was the idea that I had, and I wrote this book, The Emperor's New Mind. I thought probably it would disappear without trace, but then Stephen Hawking had, had written his book on the brief history of time, and uh, he had got, uh, what's his name, Carl Sagan to write a, a foreword. So I thought I should get somebody decent to write a foreword, then maybe, so I got Martin Gardner. So I, I had no idea what Martin, Martin Gardner's views were. He said, yes, I agree with you, he said. So, so he was happy to write uh, forward, and then I thought, well, it probably won't disappear without trace. No, the difference between the two books is that the brief history of time of Hawking is about that big, <laughs> and Roger's handy-dandy quick primer for consciousness is about that big. It's got <laughs> pictures. <That's> big. <laughs> 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 yes. But it, it's interesting. It is true, a lot of people hated it, yes. They did. Oh, gosh, yeah. Because mm. I was making a series on consciousness at the time. And again, <laughs> my whole life has been mentioning you and people going like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they, 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 the, the criticism was that all Roger has done is taken a mystery and wrapped it in an enigma and said, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> taken two things we didn't understand and say, because we don't understand these two things, um, they must be the same thing. That's not the argument at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. They hadn't read the book. No, a lot of them hadn't. That's true. No, that's true. But the thing is, you see, I, I had no idea what the answer was. So I wrote the book thinking that by the time I had to learn some neurophysiology and that sort of thing, by the time I'd learnt that bit, I would see where there could be something going on in the brain. See, the argument had to be that it had to be some effect where gravity comes in. And, and, yeah. and I had no idea at that time. It didn't seem to be that nerve prop propagation had any chance of, of being the answer. And uh, the thing is, you see, I was hoping that this book would be read by young people trying to learn about science and so on. Most of the letters I got from people were from old retired people. And those were the people who had time to read the book, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, not just old retired people, one person who did read the book was Stuart Hammeroff. Yes, yes. And Stuart Hammeroff his day job is to put people, and uh, maybe at the night too, and put people to sleep reversibly. In other words, give them general, general anaesthetics when they have operations. And unlike most of his colleagues, who were just as capable of putting people to sleep and waking them up afterwards, they didn't seem to worry as much as he did about what they were actually doing. Yeah. So this point was, what do the general anaesthetics act on? And his view was that they act on these things called microtubules. And so he sent me a letter, and he said, the thing missing from your argument is you haven't mentioned microtubules. And I thought, microtubules? I get lots of letters from nut, nutty people, you see. I thought, oh gosh, it's another one. <laughs> but then I looked it up, and I saw, yeah, they're real. I should, know, I should have known about them. And these are little tiny tubes. And I thought the chance of preserving quantum coherence at that level was much, much greater. Than but than also, in just the last year or two, 
a lot more people are coming around to this idea because the, the, the problem was always people said, but can you maintain quantum states in the brain? Because the brain is a noisy, messy, and warm place, which is generally not good for quantum mechanics. G generally, if, if we want to do anything with quantum mechanics, we, we buy a truckload of liquid nitrogen and freeze the entire place down, and then we start. Well, we, they. Um, and so people didn't like it. But in the last two years, a lot of new people are starting because they've realized actually they can find coherent quantum stuff in yeah. the brain where they didn't expect it. So, so R Roger's um, detractors are all feeling a bit peeved at the moment. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.